Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the channel. And I want to start today's video off with a PSA. This rock formation is where the super samples will spawn. Now, please be aware, there is generally two of these on every map that you go on. One will have the super samples and one won't have the super samples. Now, this the super samples themselves will only spawn on difficulty seven and above. And it's kind of the main reason for those difficulties because it will get you the final tier of upgrades for your ship. And uh, yeah, you want to make sure you can extract with them if you can. Also, shooting charges in the head with a railgun. I don't think it's ever going to get old. But yeah, I just wanted to throw this out there because I don't think many people realize that that rock is where they spawn. You can see it in the distance. So it really helps finding, well, where the super samples are. And as you can see, my teammate here, well, absolutely loving it. Nice one. <laughs> So here's a question. The player base doesn't seem to like fighting automatons. Everybody is out there killing Terminids. Now, is that actually happening? Well, let's take a look at some statistics. These are the stats taken right now from divers.gg. I'll put a link to this website in the description below. But basically, this is where you can go and see where the number of hell divers are and what planets they're on. Now, there are some things going on with the Galactic War itself. I think it's been placed on hold. I think Arrowhead are doing sort of uh, kind of things behind the scenes to make sure that the well the game remains stable. Um, but this is what we're looking at at the moment. So Angel's Venture, this is the planet everybody seems to be going to. Um, and remember, there's no major order in effect at the moment for any of this stuff. But that's kind of besides the point. The point I want to make here is look at the planets and look at the enemies. So yeah, there's 163,000 currently on Angel's Venture, obviously against Terminids. Um, Drapnir, you've got 28,000 against the automatons. And then as we go down the list, you'll see Terminid, 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 and then two automaton planets at the bottom. Now, I think this kind of does sort of indicate that the player base generally prefers at the moment to kill the Terminids. And the question is why? Well, before I go into my mad ramble about why I think it's the case, um, I just want to show you this post on Reddit because this is what sparked the sort of discussion for myself. And this user says player base doesn't seem to like fighting automatons. The player count for automatons is always significantly lower than terminids. Terminids have well, terminids will have 200 to 400,000 plus fighting and automatons will have like 50k or so. We cannot seem to liberate Malevolon Creek and all of the other planets are being liberated at a slower rate. I think the reason why is because automatons are just genuinely harder to fight and they can kill you at a distance. I also feel like weapons just don't do enough with them either and they can call in crazy amounts of reinforcements too i think it's also safe to say they have too many things that one shot you too rocket devastators cannons mortars tanks rocket soldiers the automatons that jump to you and if you kill them close they just explode and kill you dealing with all of this can be frustrating and it doesn't help that they have some godly aim from up to 100 meters or more away it's discouraging to get one shot constantly and many of the automaton soldiers are extremely tanky in terms of time to kill and most weapons bounce off them half the time. Then there's blocking use of stratagems and modifiers on top of that. It's just not fun. Using mechs against them is a death sentence. They pretty much one shot you with that too. So yeah, fighting terminids while they have their problems feels better to play against. So let's deconstruct this because... I think the main reason I myself do fight the Terminids is I am still <laughs> going for that sort of... <laughs> Honestly, straight up, I'm going for that <laughs> Starship Troopers power fantasy, right? I'm on Clendathu and I'm destroying the bugs. That's what I'm doing, right? Um, I, I think as well, the Terminids are kind of... They give you more of a feeling of um, you're fighting back waves of enemies, right? Just because of the way they spawn, because of their units. They're generally all melee combat. I know they're not all. The Scavengers got ranged combat, the little, you know, the little green bug. The Bile Spewers also ranged. And obviously, that's got an artillery uh, attack, which is very inconsistent. But when it hits you, it's quite annoying. Of course, the Bile Titan as well has got a ranged attack. Um, but, you know, generally, you're looking at, like, the Warrior, the Hunter, the Stalker, the Charger... Uh, brood commanders they all want to get in your face and kill you right but while you're getting hit by a wave of mobs and you're just like destroying them it feels great and also they die in a really awesome way the way they're like limbs all fly off and their armor gets ripped off it feels awesome it feels like you're destroying the bugs and for me i think honestly that's why i prefer playing against them however like this reddit user said there is a very viable point to be made about the instant kill mechanics that the automatons have got now on the higher difficulties this is where things like the shield backpack thing starts becoming meta and all of that stuff because you are getting one shot by a lot of the enemies. So when you're looking at things like the, the rocket devastators, you're looking at even the Hulk. The Hulk can take you out if it spawns with ranged weapon uh, combinations. The tank obviously will just destroy you and the tank's turret is also just a turret in the map as well and that will often hit you and you're like, what the hell is going on there? 
Um, and of course, they do have melee units like the Berserker and the Commissar that will run at you and try and chop you up. And even just their standard troopers have got good aim. Now, also, mechs are a thing in the game right now. And a lot of people are using the mech stratagem because it's free. Um, but the mechs are really, really good on Terminid extractions, right? This is where I'm using them. This is where I think they're going to be meta pretty much. Uh, unless you need them in like a dire situation. Because it's basically like a big mobile gun to it. But against the automatons, absolutely good night Vienna. If you try and hold uh, any sort of automaton attack. Because they're just going to shoot you from range. And your mech will get destroyed. And it is surprisingly difficult to realize how much damage your mech has taken. If you watch it, the mech will start to sort of smoke and then explode. Um, which is obviously not good. Because if it explodes with you in it, then you're just dead. So yeah, I think it's like swings and roundabouts. But I do think it is harder against the automatons because they have very good aim. They've got very good sort of pre-aim as well. Obviously, they've all got wall hack. And yeah, the rocket devastators, as was discussed by the CEO, do have um, this sort of prediction where even if you break line of sight, they still know where you are and they'll still fire rockets at you and it will still instantly kill you uh, if you don't have any uh, shields active, which is a bit of a bummer. So yeah, I think for me personally, I, at the moment, I'm enjoying the Terminids. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy fighting the automatons as well. It gives me that, like, Terminator 2 power fantasy, like you're in the war against Skynet uh, and all of the, the bots coming towards, you know, like at the start of Terminator 2 where the skull gets crushed. You know, it, it feels like that, and obviously that's what they're going for. But yeah, they're just harder, and I think it's just by their nature. They're always kind of going to be like that unless Arrowhead decide to make their aim terrible, which, I don't know, maybe that'll take away from the automatons. Now, there is one thing to be said here as well. The number of players on the planet will change when the major order is issued. So if there's an automaton major order, everyone will go and fight the automatons. Look at what happened with the mechs. The mechs with Tian Quan, that's the planet, I believe. Uh, we need to go and liberate that. And we just, everybody went there and did it. And we did it four times faster than what the developers expected. So yeah, things will change. And it's all kind of based on Joel. It's based on the uh, major order. But yeah, I think if you just leave the community to their own devices probably they will just fight the Terminates because, I don't know, it just feels more like Starship Troopers, at least to me anyway. <laughs> so following on from the little discussion we've just had of the automatons, there is this Reddit post here, and this is a great, great topic because it does lead on from what we just discussed. So it's this omniscient em enemies being a serious problem. So all-knowing enemies, they know where you are, they're just going to find you. And yeah, the more you play Helldivers, you start to see patterns in the way enemy groups spawn, the way squads spawn, the way they track you. And this is what this user says. A lot of discussion has been going on regarding the seemingly sudden spike in difficulty from all factors since the last patch. Many people have already pointed out that the changes to the weapons are only a minor part of it. And that the real problem lies with the apparent shadow buffs to enemy numbers, aggression, random spawns and patrols always coincidentally pathing straight towards your position. However, something I've also noticed is that seriously hampering any form of stealth tactic is that enemies don't actually notice you using their senses but rather they are triggered by activity and then instantly know where you are this is obvious when you throw stratagems far away or stray bullets hit a rock from the other side of an objective and enemies close to where the stratagem or bullet lands immediately head to your location regardless of how hidden you are or how hard you move to remain out of their line of sight the most egregious example of this and the one that pushed me to create this post was when earlier today I took the landmines with me to complete the personal order, which, by the way, I've also, I was doing that today as well. <laughs> it was, actually, the landmines are pretty good, the anti personnel, especially on like, if, if you know where something is going to spawn. So, obviously, with the bugs, when the breach happens, if you just throw it on a breach, you'll get a ton of kills, which is quite easy to do the, uh, the daily order. Um, but anyway, I threw down the landmines to cover one side of an objective. Later, a patrol came by and passed straight through the landmines, so I moved out of their line of sight and waited for it to pass in a spot where a normal patrol would not notice. I was even wearing the stealth armor. Yet, as the bug stepped on a landmine, the entire patrol turned towards me and started charging me hell. Later on, I was at a different objective, and a patrol all the way back ran into the mines, still there, and came straight for me across the map. How are we supposed to be strategic and rely on tactics, positioning and air support to win if the enemies can just cheat their way through? I love the concept that your raw firepower alone won't be enough to stand against the horde, that you must rely on planning and support from other Helldivers and your stratagems to be able to stand a chance. But as long as the game pulls things like this, there really is no compromise or strategy that feels both fair and fun. Now, my question to you guys would be, is, is this actually a fair comment? I think um, there's always going to be issues with games like Helldivers where, you know, there is an AI script running for the, uh, the, the enemies. 
they need to react and act in a certain way. And I think it's quite obvious that at the moment, I mean, we've all been there when we've thrown the stratagem and then they suddenly turn around. Like the railgun stratagem, right? I use this quite a lot. Um, the orbital railgun this is. Maybe I want to blow up a charge from range. I'll throw it into a pack before I even get near the pack. And immediately they see the, the thing and they run straight at me. But like I might be behind a rock. Like how would they know where I am? But they do and they come towards you. It is kind of immersion breaking. So maybe this is something they'll look at. Um, and of course they can make tweaks to all of this stuff. They can change the way enemy behavior is. I would say though the automatons have got another issue where entire squads of automatons just seem to appear. Which is like it's... Like the berserkers will just appear and I'll be like 10 of them. And you're like, what in the hell? They're just behind me and they just run at you with their chainsaws and cut you up. So yeah, they're, they're kind of weird things. And this is sort of, as we play more of the game, as players get used to hell divers, they're starting to sort of download and work out the way things happen in, 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 in you know, regards to spawns, the way enemies react. And this is just kind of part of understanding the game, I guess. But it's up to the devs to keep spicing this up uh, and make it feel more organic, I guess. So talking of making it feeling more organic, do you guys agree with this? Should clearing all nests and bases equal less swarms at extraction? Now, I spoke about this in a previous video, but this is, um, I don't know about this because you've got to think like the fantasy of the, I mean, it's a game at the end of the day, right? If you're going around the map and you blow up all of the nests, then no <laughs> terminids will spawn on the mission. So then you just walk to the extraction and leave. That would have made for a very good extraction phase, would it? Like, you know, you have to think that Destroying the nest, yeah, it's an objective, and I think that's why the devs have put it in as a bonus objective, unless it's a you know a blitz mission and you're going around destroying nests or automaton factories. But going around and destroying them and get the bonus XP at the end of the mission, to me, to be honest, that's probably enough. The longer you remain on a mission, the more the enemies will spawn. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because it's this moment of, hey, we're destroying their nests, we're destroying their factories, there shouldn't be more of them coming, there should be less. But the way the game is balanced, the way the game plays, is it leads up to this crescendo of the extraction and that's where things get really insane and if you haven't been taking out the big elites you know if you've got loads of bile titans still walking around you're probably going to get swamped by them and and that's sort of the fantasy of the game so i'm i'm not in, i don't entirely agree with this i think that this is okay as it is in the game just giving you additional xp if you want to go and do these bonus objectives um but like less swarms at extraction i don't know i think like there are different ways they could approach extraction they could maybe have the enemies spawn further out from extraction so it looks like they're running towards you instead of like, as I said, been fighting a lot of Terminids at the moment. It's the same with bots though, because bots just drop straight on you with their dropships. But Terminid um, breaches will just happen all around the extraction. They're not happening and then they're running towards you. So you get that moment of like that sort of, you know, you're on the beaches at D-Day, final last stand kind of thing, firing into the massive waves of enemies coming. You don't get that feeling because they're just on top of you anyway. Um, so yeah, maybe the little tweaks they could make. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I agree with this. The CEO has been active over on X, and this is really interesting because a user says, would you consider armor set buffs and perks to entice fellow hell, hell divers to wear a complete armor set? And the CEO just says, not really. It doesn't make that much sense why matching clothing or armor would do anything special than it well matching. This is an interesting uh, look behind the, the curtain, I think, to the way <laughs> the CEO rolls old Johan because... You think of it this way, right? This is like a World of Warcraft approach, isn't it? There are other games do this as well, right? Does Destiny do it? I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, set perks, Diablo games, you know, action RPG games. They, they love that. You know, you've got a set of armor on, you get a special ability. MMOs do it. World of Warcraft does it and all of that stuff. Um, should it be in Helldivers? Honestly, I don't, I don't really care. Like if you had a full recon set on and it maybe gives you some sort of special recon ability, I wouldn't mind that, right? I think that'd be pretty cool, but... Yeah, the CEO doesn't seem to agree with that. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to see armor set bonuses anytime soon. Now, I must admit, this meme is highly relevant. <laughs> the normal gun dog, so the gun dog that's just got the assault rifle, is absolutely garbage. This thing spends ages reloading. It's terrible. But the laser version is absolutely sick and is becoming my favorite backpack, mainly because I'm on my railgun arc at the moment. But it is so good. It's so powerful. It never really runs out of ammo because it's a laser. It just keeps firing. But it does massive amounts of damage as well. It annihilates Terminates. It's so good. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the video. Remember, if you did enjoy this stuff, then do like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Tell me how you're getting on with Helldivers 2. It really helps the video and it helps uh, grow as well. So we, that's absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. See you soon.